something major just happened in the skies. I mean, something that's really going to reshape global travel, influence, everything for decades. And I'm not sure people are quite grasping the scale yet. No, I think you're right. It feels seismic. Exactly. We're talking about China's new C-929 aircraft. It just pulled off an incredible 12,000 kilometer nonstop test flight. Uh, this isn't just, you know, good engineering. It's a direct challenge, a real shot across the bow to Boeing and Airbus. Absolutely. And that 12,000 kilometers, it sounds like a big number, but let's uh, let's make it real for people listening. Yeah, please do. That distance means flying nonstop from, say, Beijing to New York or Shanghai to London, <laughs> even somewhere like Guangzhou to Buenos Aires. Think about that capability. Wow. Until now, that ultra long range wide body market, that was really the domain of the big two. Boeing, Airbus. But this flight proves Comac, China's state aerospace company, isn't just trying to catch up anymore. They're aiming to change the game entirely. And that's what we're going to explore today. What does this flight actually mean for travelers, for airlines, for, well, the balance of power in aviation? We'll dig into some surprising stuff about how it was developed, what it can do, and the ripples this is causing globally. It's about way more than just carrying passengers. Let's get into it. So back in June 2025, clear skies, and China makes history. The C-929 nails that 12,000 kilometer nonstop flight. It wasn't just, can we build a big plane? It was proof. Proof they have the technical chops for these intercontinental wide bodies ready to compete head on. A huge moment for them. Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting are the performance details coming out of that flight. Analysts were watching very closely. I bet. It held cruising speed, altitude, rock solid stability. Right. But the key things, impressive fuel efficiency and aerodynamics. Areas where historically Chinese designs maybe lagged a bit. Right. Early data and okay, it's still unofficial, but it suggests the C929 might even beat the Boeing 787 Dreamliner on some metrics, mm -hmm. like the range to fuel ratio. Really? Oh. That's significant. It's huge for airlines. Less fuel burn means lower operating costs, maybe opening up even longer routes profitably. If those numbers hold up, mm -hmm. that's not just competition. It's challenging the core economics of long haul flight for the established players. And the timing. It feels incredibly strategic, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Boeing is still, you know, dealing with the 737 Mema X fallout, plus all sorts of production headaches, delays, quality control worries. It's shaken confidence. Mm -hmm, definitely. And Airbus, while doing better, still faces regulatory issues, political headwinds in different places, yeah. trade disputes, subsidy arguments, that kind of thing. Right. So. China comes along with this perfectly timed success story. It feels like more than just engineering. It's a clear political and economic statement. Like, we're ready to lead, especially while you guys are distracted. And the story of how the C-929 even got here is fascinating, too. It started as a joint project with Russia, the CR-929. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that. But that fell apart back in 2023. Big disagreements over IP, who controls the supply chain. Yep. Basically, China decided they could go it alone. So they took full control. Yep, took the reins completely. And crucially, they started strategically sourcing components, either domestically or from countries less likely to get hit by U.S. export controls. It's not just about this plane. It's a deliberate move towards, well, strategic decoupling. We're seeing it in other tech sectors, too. Aviation. Nation sovereignty is the goal. And this isn't just happening in a lab somewhere. The support at home is massive, right? Chinese airlines are lining up. Absolutely. That's a huge advantage. Big state carriers like China Eastern, Air China, they're not just kicking the tires. They're signaling they're ready to place massive orders once it's certified. And for them, it's not just about performance or price, is it? Exactly. It's about independence. Independence from U.S. and European suppliers. In today's world, where supply chains can become political tools, that independence is golden. It locks down Comac's home market, giving them a solid base before they even seriously target international sales. Okay, let's break this down further. The 12,000-kilometer flight grabbed headlines, sure, but how does the C929 actually stack up against the giants, Boeing and Airbus, beyond the hype? Well, let's look at the specs. It's a wide body twin jet designed for roughly 250 to 320 passengers. So direct competition for the 787 Dreamliner, the Airbus A330neo, maybe even the A350 on some routes. Precisely. And that 12,000 kilometer range puts it squarely in the long haul category with those established players. No question about that. But it's more than just size and range, right? right? What about the tech? That's where Comac has really pushed hard. They're reportedly using a lot of composite materials in the fuselage, much like the 787. Which means lighter weight, better fuel economy. Correct. 
lighter, stronger, better fuel burn, lower costs for airlines. Yeah. Plus, it lets them pressurize the cabin better, which helps with passenger comfort. They've also focused on things like engine integration, making it quieter, advanced flight controls. Okay, but the engines themselves, are they Chinese? Ah, good question. The current prototypes, they're still using engines co-developed with Western companies. That's a key dependency right now. But that's not the long-term plan. Definitely not. China is pouring resources into developing its own engine, the CJ2000. The goal is full domestic independence for the engine, the heart of the plane. If they pull that off... That reshapes everything. Completely. It could create a whole new center of gravity in jet engine tech, breaking that Western dominance. And inside the plane, what about the passenger experience? Because that's where airlines really compete sometimes. Right. Early designs in Comac's own statements suggest they're aiming for a clean, modern feel. Maybe leaning a bit more towards Airbus's focus on comfort, rather than Boeing's traditional efficiency-first approach. So things like? Think pet screens, yeah. better air filtration, HEPA filters, more frequent air changes, and that optimized cabin pressure I mentioned. It makes the cabin feel like you're at a lower altitude. Which helps with jet lag on those super long flights. Exactly. Makes ultra-long haul much more tolerable. And you can bet Chinese airlines will customize these cabins to be pretty luxurious, especially on flagship international routes. They'll want to show it off. Okay, but here's maybe the killer point. The price. Ah, yes. The price tag. This could be the real game changer. A new Boeing 787, what does that cost? $250 million, $300 million. In that ballpark, yeah. List prices vary, but it's expensive. And the C929? Analysts expect a significant discount. Maybe somewhere in the 180 to $200 million range. Wow. That's a huge difference. It's massive. For airlines, especially in fast grind markets, Asia, Africa, Latin America, saving $70, $100 million per plane, that's incredibly tempting. And it's not just the sticker price, is it? No. Add in potential government subsidies, flexible financing from Chinese state banks, maybe some diplomatic nudging through trade deals like the Belt and Road Initiative. It becomes a very attractive package. Exactly. An almost irresistible economic offer for many airlines, even though Comac is the new kid on the block. Of course, it's not all smooth sailing for Comac. They face some serious challenges, right? Big headwinds. Definitely. Boeing and Airbus have decades of experience. They've built up huge global support networks, maintenance, spare parts, training. And critically, they have established safety records that regulators and passengers trust implicitly. And COMAC doesn't have the key international certifications yet from the FAA in the U.S. or EASA in Europe. That's the biggest hurdle right now. Without FAA and EASA approval, selling to Western Airlines is basically impossible. And there are other concerns, too. Yes. Questions about data security persist, given Comac's state ownership and China's security laws. Setting up a truly global spare parts network, a massive logistical undertaking, pilot training infrastructure needs to be built out. These aren't small details. They're essential. The world is changing. It absolutely is. Mm -hmm. Geopolitical tensions, worried about supply chains. Mm -hmm. Many countries are looking to diversify away from just Boeing and Airbus. They don't want all their eggs in one basket. So China, with the C929, arrives at just the right moment to offer an alternative. Perfectly positioned, offering a capable plane, attractive financing, and leveraging its growing economic influence. For Boeing and Airbus, already struggling with their own issues, this isn't just a minor competitor. This could be the start of a real fundamental shift in the global aviation landscape. So the C929, it really feels like it's much more than just an airplane, doesn't it? Oh, much more. It's a symbol, a very visible symbol of China's bigger ambition to, well, dominate the skies, commercially and politically. It's one piece in a much larger puzzle. Exactly. If you step back, China isn't just trying to build a rival to Boeing or Airbus. They're building an entire ecosystem, a self-reliant aviation industry that could genuinely shift the global balance of power in aerospace. How are they doing that? What are the pieces? Well, first, infrastructure. China has spent billions building and upgrading airports domestically. Right. Over 240 commercial airports now, many more planned. Okay, but that's internal. Right. But it extends outward through the Belt and Road Initiative. China is funding and building airports in partner nations across Asia, Africa, the Middle East. Ah, and those deals often come with strings attached. Sometimes subtly, sometimes more directly. Incentives to buy Chinese planes once they're available and certified locally. So China's building the runways and terminals for its planes to land on globally, creating the whole environment. Clever. And their manufacturing approach is different too. Very different. Comac plugs into this huge vertically integrated network state-owned suppliers, 
top universities, even military research labs. It's all coordinated. So less fragmented than Western supply chains. Less fragmented and driven by long-term national strategy, not just quarterly profits. It allows them to align policy directly with production in a way Western companies often can't. It might not always be efficient in a pure market sense, but it's incredibly strategic for hitting national goals. And the ultimate goal seems to be self-sufficiency, especially after U.S. sanctions and restrictions. That's become paramount, technological self-sufficiency. The CJ2000 engine is the prime example, getting rid of that reliance on Western engines. But it's also avionics, flight controls, materials, uh, everything. They want a plane built entirely without Western tech. That's the long-term vision, a fully decoupled aircraft. Imagine the autonomy that gives them, the resilience against future sanctions. It's a powerful goal in today's world. So bringing this all together, what does it mean for global influence? There's this idea of soft power through aviation. Absolutely. China sees aviation like high-speed rail or 5G tech, a tool for influence. Oh, so. By offering modern, affordable planes with good financing, especially to developing nations, China builds deep ties. A country buying Comac planes might then adopt other Chinese tech, maybe join trade agreements favoring the yuan, get better access to China's tourism market. It draws them into China's orbit. Exactly. It's a relationship, often beneficial, but one that subtly shifts the economic and political balance. Western critics often focus on whether the C929 matches Boeing feature for feature today or lacks certifications today. And they might be missing the bigger picture. I think so. This yeah. isn't necessarily about winning head to head tomorrow. It's about playing the long game. Establish the foothold now. Become the go-to supplier for much of the developing world in 10, 15 years. They're even trying to build their own parallel system for aviation recognition, starting with friendly countries. The strategy is clear. Create demand, provide supply, and eventually maybe even help write the rules. So wrapping up, the C929 isn't just a new jetliner. It's a geopolitical signal, loud and clear, crafted in metal and composite saying, we're here, we're ready to lead. The average passenger might just see another plane, but in Washington, Brussels, they see a challenge. A fundamental challenge. Washington isn't just worried about lost plane orders. It's about losing strategic leverage. How so? Aviation is power. The country building the planes often sets the standards, controls key tech, manages the supply chains. For decades, that's been the West, particularly the U.S. Think jet engines, navigation systems, advanced materials. And the C929, especially with that Chinese engine, disrupts that. Potentially, yes. It erodes that control, that leverage. Mm. And China's push for self-sufficiency makes it harder to contain them with sanctions like before. They've learned from past tech disputes and are building domestic alternatives. And there's a military angle too, isn't there? Dual-use tech. Undeniably. Advances made for the C929 avionics, radar, flight controls can easily flow into military applications. Developing this sophisticated civilian jet boosts their know-how for next-gen military aircraft, drones, surveillance systems. It's a civilian project with clear strategic military benefits. And it could reshape alliances. Potentially. If countries start relying on Chinese planes, they might adopt Chinese maintenance, logistics, training standards. This creates a kind of aviation sphere of influence. Pulling them closer to Beijing, further from the West. Subtly, yes. For Boeing and Airbus, this is tough. They're already stretched. Now they face a competitor with state backing, deep pockets, long-term planning. Advantages they just can't replicate easily. That C929 test flight wasn't just a technical feat. It was a signal flare. China's time on the sidelines is over. So the C929's successful flight really feels like the dawn of a new era. Boeing and Airbus have written the rules for so long, but now China is grabbing the pen. They're not just building a plane, they're challenging the whole geopolitical order in the skies. In this shift, it's going to affect more than just airlines or governments. It could eventually influence the price you pay for tickets, the kind of plane you fly on internationally, maybe even which countries hold more sway in the future. The competition is heating up and it's going to reshape travel, trade, and power globally. It really is something to watch. Absolutely. If you found this discussion insightful, and we hope you did, please do give this video a like. Let us know what you think in the comments below. We'd love to hear your views. And definitely subscribe to the Geopolitics Gazette channel for more expert insights into these global developments.